Yes, I am back, and yes, there are some changes being made around here, but this is neither the time nor place to elaborate on that. While I work on some larger video projects, I decided that I would return to YouTube with a little video on a Netflix series that I recently binged called Love, Death, and Robots. It's pretty popular, so I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it. If you haven't heard of it, basically what it is is a bunch of one-off, mostly animated shorts done by different studios and filmmakers for every episode. It's an anthology series, meaning that every episode tells an entirely different story with different characters in a different setting. These stories range anywhere from sci-fi to horror to comedy to fantasy, and overall the series is incredibly unique, thought-provoking, and enjoyable. So if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend turning this shit off and going to watch it because there will be spoilers for one episode ahead. But do return once you've seen it. I want to make a few videos discussing some of my personal favorite episodes from the series, starting with the subject of today's video, the fifth episode in season two titled The Tall Grass. A man is on a train when suddenly it makes an unscheduled stop in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by fields of tall grass. He gets off the train for a cigarette and the conductor tells him not to wander off too far as they'll be leaving shortly. While the man is smoking, he notices strange lights out in the fields of grass and Almost as if entranced by them, he decides to leave the train and investigate. Unfortunately for him, he loses his sense of direction while in the grass, and when he hears the conductor calling out that the train is leaving, the man is unable to find his way back. Instead, he stumbles upon the source of the strange lights. They are pale, faceless humanoid creatures that give off a faint bluish glow under the moonlight. They chase the man through the grass with an apparent intent to eat or kill him. Eventually, he once again finds the train where he is saved by the train conductor using a torch to scare the creatures off. When they are back aboard the train, he asks the conductor what those things were, to which he replies, As far as I can tell, most of them used to be people. Maybe some got lost crossing the plains, or maybe they got off the train at the wrong place. The man asks if this has happened before, and the conductor tells him, It happens every now and then. The train loses steam always at this spot, and then it's like some kind of door opens up out there. I figure it leads to some other world. And the episode ends as the man looks across the fields and sees it light up with the eerie lights of the many creatures that wait in the tall grass for the next unsuspecting traveler. Now, I did some research into this episode, and it's apparently an adaption of quite an old short story of the same name, written by horror author Joe R. Lansdale, and so, of course, I read the story so I can provide some extra context to the events of the episode. Admittedly, this episode probably isn't on everyone's top five, but it caught my attention for a few reasons. The first being the attention to detail. In the beginning, the man is reading a newspaper, and if you pause it, you can read a few headlines. Couple killed in homejacking. 33 missing in hotel fire. West Coast businesses flourish amidst New World's economic growth. So we know from the look of the train, the man's clothing, and his watch that this is clearly set in the past, but the newspaper headline using the term New World to refer to the Americas is a bit of an outdated term that you don't really see anymore, so that also helps to establish a general time frame as far as when this took place. Likely in the late 19th century, early 20th century. Which is confirmed by the original work, which claims that this takes place in 1901 to be exact. If you're also really quick, you can make out what the newspaper is called, which is the New Glasgow Financial Times. There are actually four New Glasgows in the West, three of which are in Canada, and I believe this story takes place in the United States based on the original short story, which means he must have gotten this paper from New Glasgow, Virginia, which is now called Clifford, I believe. This alludes to another thing in the original work not mentioned in the episode, which is that the man is actually a businessman traveling for work, hence the financial newspaper. He's on his way back home to see his girlfriend. I love that the episode leaves out a lot of details about the story, yet it does tell us all these things in subtle ways. The original work has a narrator to tell us these things, but the episode of course can only give us visual clues. Another neat little detail is how the man checks his watch in the beginning. In the original work, the narrator, who is the man himself retelling the story as a much older man, notes that on this particular night he couldn't sleep for whatever reason, and that he was up later than he normally is on these train rides. He mentions that he doesn't recognize the fields of tall grass despite taking this same route multiple times because usually he's likely sleeping when they pass through here. So him checking the watch is actually a bit more significant than it appears. The next bits of important detail come from the train conductor. You'll notice that he comes by and looks in the man's cabin window. He's clearly walking around checking on the passengers, but why exactly? Well, the original work sheds some light on this as well. 
When the man steps outside for a cigarette, in the original story, the conductor mentions that normally, if the passengers go to sleep before 12, they don't wake up during this stop. So in the episode, when we see him checking the cabins, he's making sure that everyone is asleep presumably to make sure that everyone will be safe and not leave the train. This is also shown to us when the man walks past a cabin and sees a sleeping passenger, undisturbed by the train's sudden grinding halt. We also find out from the original work that when the conductor was walking through the train, he was locking the doors of the cabins. He said that usually if people are awake when the door is locked, he tells them that it's stuck and can't be fixed till morning. That way, they remain safe on the train. Unfortunately, in the story, our protagonist's cabin had a faulty lock that didn't lock the door properly, allowing him to leave. After knowing what's out in the grass and reading the original short story, all of the actions and dialogue of the train conductor become a lot creepier. He seems very adamant that the man should get back on board, and you'll notice while he says this, he looks out into the field, clearly worried about losing another passenger to this strange place. After the man then convinces the conductor that he has time for a smoke, the conductor tells him not to wander, and that when the train is ready to go again, he'll call him to get on board, but no more than twice. After that, they'll leave no matter what. This is especially unsettling after the fact because we realize that the conductor has experienced this before. As he tells the man at the end of the episode, the train often stops in this same location, and that he's clearly lost passengers here as well. So he was telling the man not to wander because he knows that's how the creatures get people, and he tells him that he'll only call him twice, likely because he knows that if he doesn't hear from him after that, then they're probably already gone, and it's unsafe to stick around. Another thing that the original work tells us regarding the creatures is that just as the train conductor theorizes at the end of the episode, they were indeed once human beings. In the short story, as the man recounts the events, he says, I somehow knew that if I was bitten, I would not be chewed and eaten, but that bite would make me like them, that my bones would come free of me along with my features and everything that made me human, and I knew too that these things were originally from train stops and from frontier scouting parties, adventurers and surveyors, and all manner of folk who had at one time been crossing these desolate lands and found themselves here. Also, in the original story, some of these creatures still have clothes on, so that pretty much confirms that. Another neat little detail in the episode is this pit full of bones that the man stumbles into during the chase. Without reading the story, it seems these are the bones of the victims that these things had devoured, but from the narrator's line, that my bones would come free of me along with my features and everything that made me human, we can now tell that the bones on the ground were actually the bones of the people who became these creatures. Now, besides all of the interesting little details, this story is really charming in a way. Simple, yet full of mystery. So many questions left unanswered, and I think it's better for it. Like, why are these creatures here? What does the conductor mean by, it's like a door opens up out there? In the original work, he alludes to it being a door to the other side, or one of many sides, as he puts it. What mystical force causes the train to always stop at this location? Why does this only happen between 12 a.m. and 2 a.m., as specified by the conductor in the original story? And why do people not wake up during this stop if they fell asleep before 12? Why do these creatures aim to expand their numbers, or why do they want others to become like them? How is it that the man got lost so close to the train? There is clearly something supernatural going on here, but as to what it is exactly, we may never know the answer. And. I like it that way. It's one of the main reasons this story will stick in my head for a long time. It's full of mystery and things to wonder about. Not to mention, I love a good cryptid story, and this definitely comes off as that in some ways. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the term, cryptids are animals or creatures that some believe to exist in the wild but are not believed to exist by mainstream science. This can be anything from Sasquatch to Wendigo, Skinwalkers, Chupacabra, Sea Monsters, etc. These stories have always interested me much more than simple ghost stories, and to be honest I find them much creepier for some reason. But more importantly, they make the world feel like a more magical place. In a creepy kind of way, but magical nonetheless. I'd say that a story like The Tall Grass definitely achieves that as well, implying that there are places in the world with connections to another world. Places where you might temporarily slip into this other world and meet its inhabitants. Places like this desolate, moonlit field of tall grass in the middle of nowhere. 
All in all, I just thought this episode was done really well. It stayed true to the original work, had so many little details that add to the atmosphere and storytelling, and I think a train always stopping in the middle of a field where these strange once human creatures are, using their light to draw unfortunate passengers into the grass is a very interesting, scary, and unique idea. Once again, if you haven't seen this episode in particular, or you haven't seen Love, Death, and Robots at all, I highly recommend checking it out, as this isn't the only unique story that they tell. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like, and subscribe if you're new to the channel to hear me talk about more things like this. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.